Hi everyone, um, I'm going to get started now. And so thank you for attending. My name is Gareth, I'm part of Edmentum International. And I'm going to take you through Education City today. And um, first of all, I'm going to go through a brief presentation with a little bit more information. Um, and then we're going to go into the actual programme itself um, and show you around it. But first of all, I just want to give you a little bit of information about who we are as a company. Um, some of you may have used some of our programmes in the past, uh, as we started as far back as the 1960s with our US Curriculum Solution course uh, Throughout the years, we've developed a number of different solutions to cater for adapting needs around the world. Uh, today, we support over 1 million teachers with digital learning of over 14 million students. The majority of our solutions started the life as a US curriculum based resource. However, Education City is our UK curriculum programme and it caters for students from ages three through to 11. So what is Education City? Education City is a teaching, learning and assessment resource that covers foundation up to year six in English, maths and science. It was launched over 20 years ago and it's filled with fun and engaging content uh, that suits the academic year level that your students are in. We have on the programme over 5,000 pieces of content in total, all of which can be used whenever you need it and all fit within certain content types, depending on the approach you're taking for that skill. As mentioned, Education City is fully aligned to the UK curriculum. However, it is adaptable to other curriculum as it is topic based and we have a number of schools who use different curriculum that also use Education City to support their students. Behind the scenes, we have a dedicated team of educationalists, artists and developers that create on average over a thousand pieces of content a year to ensure teachers have the flexibility to teach what they want and how they want to. As mentioned, Education City has a host of features that are at, uh, allowed to adapt to your needs. So you can create customised lessons in advance, or you can set home learning tasks based on what you've done in class. Due to the ever-changing nature of schools in the current climate, Education City is a great tool to include in a blended learning environment, as we not only have digital resources, but also printable options as well. That means anything you're doing in the class can also be replicated and extended upon at home. It's easy to, to switch between online and physical learning with Education City because um, it also creates a familiarity with the students as the characters you see uh, in the resource which I'll show you are in, uh, included in everything we do. The different types of material we have created uh, allow the students to engage with the curriculum in different ways, whether that be through their higher order thinking skills, through assessments or videos and uh, edu educational games as well. The vast majority of tools we provide are trackable and automatically marked so that you are able to track your students' progress and adapt to your class accordingly if required. With our content, uh, we try and link it all together where we can so that you have multiple options when preparing your lessons or for home learning as well. Our learn screens are a first port of call for introducing new concepts and skills. They're animation-based slideshows that can be either done as a full class, in class, or over a video call. Uh, you can also set these as homework as a quick revision of a skill as well. Activities allow students to practice what they've learned in the class, uh, which is great for reinforcement. The activities are automatically marked for you so that they can be used for flip learning, as an example, to get an understanding of what your students already know before you teach the topic. And our latest enhancements have added summative and formative assessments from year one upwards in English, maths and science. I'll go into these uh, in more detail shortly. But here are some of more examples of the types of content we provide and that supports teachers with in-depth topic-based learning. We provide things like our topic tools, which are teacher-led tools that you can manipulate to introduce topics as well as our Thinkits, which are designed to develop higher order thinking skills by providing open-ended questions. 
Our schools often use these at the start of the day to get students engaged um, and talking or perhaps after lunch to get everyone re-engaged. I just want to go into some more detailed examples of how Education City can be used in, in different scenarios. You can actually group our material together to make full lessons or schemes of work using Education City. And I brought up some examples of phonics here, which show how our different types of content work. Within phonics, we have over 250 pieces of content um, and the activities are focused on repetition rather than on being correct or incorrect so that the students are enthused to keep going. We have a phonics screening check as well, which you can give to students as and when you need to. Um, and they provide you with a list of red, non-red and alien words. Education City has a whole scheme of um, times table content from the two to the 12 times table. It all starts with a video which compromises, compromises of an animated song to help students learn their times table. And you can print out a worksheet with the lyrics for the students to use and, and revise and follow that up with activities which will test their knowledge of the times table. And along with that, um, with rewarding educational games as well, which allow the students to still learn, but in a more competitive environment. Our assessments offer over 90 curriculum aligned, formative, summative and unit tests. These are a great addition that can either give you a quick guide to your students' ability at the beginning of the year, um, a way to acclimatise your students to online assessments, or a way to assess key skills as you go. Again, these are automatically marked and analysed, which will save you time so that you can focus on teaching. And in a moment, I will jump into Education City to show you these assessments and a few other features in more detail. Um, but I just wanted to show you the sort of um, detail you can get while using our assessment reports. They can show you whether a student is passing or struggling with any particular topic so that you can look for patterns and start to make decisions which will help guide your instruction. And as you can see from the images here I've got some students who are struggling in some topics and I'm able to not only see how they did on the test but also exactly how they answered each question. In addition to everything you've seen so far, uh, we also provide a whole host of other resources which you can download and make use of. These include printable teaching packs filled with printables from all core subjects. And we also provide an e-safety section which has learn screens, activities and think kits designed to help teach your students and stay safe online. And finally, we have um, certificates, badges and other really fun printables to help you really integrate Education City into the classroom. With over 5,000 subscribers of Education City, we have a really good reputation of delivering quality topic-based content. Recently, we've hosted various webinars and received feedback from a number of schools on how they use Education City, um, in particular this year with a sudden move to online learning across the world. Edmentum has been really trying to support as many institutions as we can with their particular needs. Uh, I recently hosted a webinar with Laude Newton College, which is the quotation, uh, the quote you can see at the top of the page here. Switching suddenly to online learning meant that their teachers fully got on board with their online learning programme and Education City is being used daily and extensively to help support their curriculum. And on that note, I just want to come out of this presentation now and um, take you through um, a detailed look into Education City itself. And as we go through, if you have any questions, there should be a, a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. So please do feel free to, to ask any questions and I will come to them at the end. So what you're looking at here is the actual plan. City. So all the teachers and students get their own logins when, when they have access to this programme. Um, and within here, teachers can set classwork, they can set um, home learning tasks, or they can pull from our um, over 5,000 pieces of content as and when they want to. And that's one of the really good strengths of Education City. It's very flexible in terms of how you want to present the work to the students and finding work as and when you need it. 
as mentioned at the beginning, it is um, linked to the UK curriculum and we have a full curriculum map within here. So that as a teacher, I can just jump in to the year levels that I need and drill down into the topics and the concepts and find exactly the content that I'm looking for, for my lesson. So it's not a matter of trying to find things um, randomly. You can actually drill down exactly what you need and when you need it um, and pick this out and actually add this to your classwork in it. What you can also do is quickly search the content. So if, for example, if we're learning about multiplication, I can search that and it will bring up all of the content that's linked to that. Um, and I can review that before I do it. One of the feedback we get is what, when a, a school is about to use this program, they will go through their scheme of work for the next few weeks and they will come into Education City, use the search tool um, and go through this to find what sort of things that they can do um, to really help their learning. And as I mentioned, there's lots of different types of content that we provide. So you can see down the side here, the content types, you have a whole host of different things. Um, and what I'll do in a moment is just go through and show you some of those in a bit more detail. But when planning work, there's a few different ways you can do that. As mentioned, you can do home learning. Um, so you can set specific work, not only to a whole group, but you can also do it for individual students. So every different student can have a different scheme of work. Um, and they won't know what year level they're working from. Um, so that you can really personalize that learning to the student. What you can also do is, as you're searching through Education City, you can create classwork and essentially make lesson plans based on what you're about to teach in class. And I've created one here all about time. So I'm going to be um, doing the concept of time in my class. It's a, it's a year one class. And I've already put some pieces of content in here. To, to get me started. So I've gone through and used the search feature. And this is what a lot of schools do. They actually um, make these plans ahead of time um, because this scheme of work was saved to my login for the whole process. Um, and I can come back here and I assign it to students so they can work from this at home as well. So I've added some work into here. And the first thing I've put in is a think it. Now these think it's are great because as I mentioned, they're for to develop higher order thinking skills. So what I might do is when my students come in at the start of the day, I might leave this on my whiteboard um, or if I'm doing it online, I might share this screen so we can all discuss this because it starts off with an open-ended question. So this one, I looked at the clock five times this afternoon. In what order did I, did I see these times? So I could then open this out to the class and, and get that discussion going and really get the students engaged. These tools are really simple. They're a question and answer tab. And the answer tab gives you the answer. And uh, what were the times when I looked at the clock? And it gives you another open-ended question to get the students thinking. So it's a really good start of the day task um, that's curriculum linked that you can then bounce from and do more uh, drill down into in-depth learning as well. So I started off with that. The next thing I want to do is maybe introduce more concept of time. So I've got this topic tool here. So topic tools are a teacher led tools um, where you can actually manipulate them and use them in however way you want to. So when this loads up, it loads to the exact time here in the UK right now, um, but it will load whatever time it is where you are. Um, and you can man manipulate this. So I can change it to a digital clock, for example, and all the time it's um, changing what it's saying at the top, which is great for um, EAL learners. I can change it if we're doing a 24 hour clock, we're learning about that. Um, I can do a random so that the students can then read me the time. I can also change it to two clocks. So if we are learning about digital clocks and maybe I will change this to 20 minutes past six and then get the students to come up and actually change this to, to 20 past six. So it's a little bit different to something like an activity which is multiple choice based questions. This is actually um, allows you to adapt your lesson 
depending on what you're doing that day um, and really get the students hands on with with the program so i've got the students discussing and then got them up and actually manipulating something and the next thing i want to do is perhaps do an activity so our activities are probably the most popular part of education city they're really fun and engaging and animation based um, and they go through all the, the resource. So what I'm showing you here is just mathematics, but obviously we have English uh, and science as well. Uh, maybe I'll show you some English content in a moment too. This is an example of our activity. Count in twos, fives and tens to complete the sequence of numbers on the seashells. Count in tens. So the reason I put this activity in here, um, it's not necessarily exactly to do with time, um, but it is topic based so I want the students to count in tens so when I'm going back to the, the time I can get them to do 10 minutes past six 20 minutes past six and so on um, so the idea of this is that the students input their answer and this can be done on any device superb counting if they get it correct count in tens it goes green and if they get it incorrect <laughs> Count from the number zero in tens. It gives you a little bit of a hint of where you might have gone wrong and, and ask you to try again. As the students work through this, uh, when they're logged in, it is all automatically marked. So all the activities and all the assessments are automatically marked for you. And um, you can see at the top, top here, the score I've got. So not only will this mark my score, but it'll also mark how I answered those questions. So that when you're reviewing those scores, you can get a real idea of um, what you need to, to do or if there's any patterns emerging um, of where the students are, are going wrong. So that is um, a year one activity. And I've got a couple of year one activities. The second one is about time. But I've also got a year three activity here. Um, so what I might do is for my accelerated learners, I might um, this is all about missing numbers. I might set that as a piece of work for my um, accelerated learners to, to test them and see how they're doing. But all of those activities are those multiple choice. It could be drag and drop. Um, but it, it's all that style of animation that you, you, you will see and get familiar with. As mentioned, we also have games. We have um, something called Play Live, um, which is a really fun and engaging um, comp competition based um, resource and what it does is it pits the students against each other over a, a minute to and this one is add to 10 so all of the questions will be something below 10 so that they can do addition against the clock and in a competitive nature and the great thing about these is that you can have a leaderboard so what we do or what a lot of schools do is they host that um, if they're doing a maths week for example they will do a play live challenge over the week where that leaderboard comes into play where they can check who's the top of the leaderboard every day and reward that student. So play live is a really fun and engaging way to, um, the students can keep learning, but um, there is a more of a competitive environment. So, that's sort of a, a lesson that I've done from um, a year one perspective. As I mentioned, the, the year levels of Education City go from foundation all the way up to, to year six. And the, the content does adapt as you go through those year levels. Um, so what I was going to do is actually go into um, our assessments now and show you what that looks like. So we have the activities which you can use as and when you like. Um, and then we do have the formative, summative and unit tests. And the great thing about these is there's a lot of different ones from year one upwards. You can, like everything on Education City, you can use on any device. Um, and it's really easy, easy to set up. All you need to do is just pick your class, pick the subject and find the test that you'd like to do. I'm going to preview one of these. Um, and I have gone into a year two formative reading assessment. Now with these assessments, um, 
they're quite short, they don't take too long. Um, usually this one has 10 questions, for example. And the idea- What was the weather like at the beach? That the students would read the text and answer the questions in this particular reading assessment. Um, these are great if you want, for example, the students to prepare for online tests. They're really get, great for you to get an understanding of what they know and what they don't know. Um, and the students work through these just like they would any um, other assessment. So they would... Who was Clara? If they're not sure of a question, they could skip... What were the two girls doing at the start of the story? And you answer appropriately. So you would go through that test. This one has, as I say, 10 questions. Um, some of them have 20 questions. It depends on the, the, the actual test you're doing. So they're quite short. They're really good to get in within a lesson. Um, and that's what a lot of schools use these for. And at the end of the test, the majority of our uh, assessments will provide the students with what we call a revision journal. So what a revision journal does, based on the weaknesses that they've shown in that assessment. It will provide the students with a playlist of content um, based on those weaknesses. So for example, if my, my student was struggling in the concept of time, um, it would set some of those activities automatically to my students. So instead of setting homework, I could say, tonight, go into your, your revision journal and work on what's been set. And because these assessments come from a bank of questions, so there's thousands of questions lying underneath these assessments. When they come to the test again, they will get a different set of questions, which will hopefully help them. So all of the assessments work in that way. Um, they can go through and answer those uh, drag and drop in the same sort of way, but they won't get an idea of whether they were correct or incorrect until the end of the assessment. From your perspective as a teacher, what you can then do is come in and review the reports of that. And we have different reports and I'm gonna go into the assessment reports so you can get an idea of the data that is collected um, from that assessment. So I'm gonna go into an assessment I set recently um, and view that report. I've got three students do, doing um, a formative reading assessment and I've got varying scores here. So what this is showing me is every question that they answered and whether they were struggling with it, whether they were failing in that particular skill or whether they achieved a really good score. And you can see I've got one student who got everything right. So that's one of my accelerated students. I've got one student who's struggling and one, one student who maybe needs some additional support in these skills. Um, so it's really visual and easy to understand. And when I drill into these, I can get an idea of what questions were asked and um, whether they got them correct or incorrect. And I can even drill down further and see how exactly the students answered them. So these two students, for example, answered this in the same way. So maybe there's something that's um, common with these students that are not quite understanding about this topic. And I can see the objective there and I can maybe work on that, um, perhaps find some content to help them with that. So it's really detailed, um, but in a really easy to understand way. And because we have the formative and summative assessments, you can pull on these whenever you like. Um, and, and because they're quick, you can get these reports really quickly to give you an idea of how their reading is doing at any particular time. And of course, you can export these too. So if you have any of your own reporting tools that you use, um, you can download the, the scores and input it into those. And for the rest of the content, we do have um, additional scores as well. Again, you can see exactly how the students have answered all their questions. Um, and you can download the report and, and get a breakdown and even print certificates if they've done particularly well. Um, and I just wanted to show you, if I can, um, what this looks like. And again, you can print the certificate there if you need to. So I just had a couple of questions that I just wanted to uh, cover. Um, 
one of them was what can you just confirm what education what years the education city covers so yeah it does go from foundation uh, all the way through to year six um, and I'll, I'll just maybe show you some of the phonics content in a second as well one of the other questions is can i access on any device um, yeah absolutely all of this is html5 compatible so any device whether that be a, a computer a tablet or a phone it will adapt to the screen and you can use all of the content and all, all devices and um, one of the other questions was is it possible to to get a trial of this and the answer to that is yeah absolutely you could, what we're able to do is set you up with a trial but only that is provide you with training on this so that you can maybe try this out with some of your students whether that be a, a, a class or even a whole school if you want to um, we generally provide three weeks of access but of course we can um, if we need to adapt that for your school um, we, we can work on that so yeah absolutely and at the end of this I'll, I'll put up our contact details or you can drop us a note in the chat box and we can get in touch to to start one of those trials But I, I just want to finally um, go into some of the the phonics content, um, just because they're really, really useful in terms of helping those younger students. So not only do we have the ability to search by the skill in the curriculum, you can also just browse this by, by the subject. So I'm going to go in into English Foundation 2. Um, and we've got a, a host of different things here. We've got games, we've got videos. Um, I'm going to go into phonics and as mentioned um, in the, the brief presentation a lot of this is about repetition um, and it's really colourful again and easy to understand and it doesn't take too long and what we provide and what a lot of schools use with this um, is the whiteboard mode function so I've mentioned a lot about keeping track of the student scores um, but in phonics, it's something that you might not want to put too much pressure on them at that age. So what we also do is provide a whiteboard mode, which is sort of like a teacher mode where it takes the timer away from the activity. So it allows you to go through this at your own pace, pause at every question so that you can reflect on it. And provide feedback. Come and explore the letter S. It makes the S sound like snake explore the screen when you hear a word that begins with s select its picture there are four to find so with phonics as i mentioned this is more about exploring the screen um, and especially if the students are using this on a tablet they can just touch these buttons boat snake there are still some more to find and, and find those. So as you can see, I've paused this, I've got no timer, so I can get all of the students to repeat that word back to me before I move on. Manu, Sten, keep going. So let me just find all these, and what it will do... There is one more to find. ...is then repeats all of those back to me. Well done! You found all of these things. S Snake, s sail, s sun, s sten. Sort these objects. If you hear the s sound anywhere in the word, drag the picture to the raft. So with this again, it's showing you the same sort of style in terms of the objective of the work but in a different way so this is actually dragging the, the content to the boat so it's a different approach to the same concept um, and that's sort of the broken down nature of the phonics work and as you as you can see um, it's really engaging the, the students the, the characters that you saw there they are all the way through the resource um, and they grow up as they go through so those look really young there and as they go into year three and four they get older and so on so the students get a nice familiarity as they go through that. On top of that, we also, as I mentioned earlier, um, we have printable resources as well. You can see here there's an activity sheet with the answer sheet. And especially at this age, the, the answer sheets are really useful because what 
you wouldn't do necessarily here with older students is provide this first but in phonics what you might do is print this out first so that the students can practice writing these letters out and then when you feel like they're ready you can jump in with the blank activity sheet where they can maybe repeat that and practice it um, so these are available throughout the year levels up to year six but that's a different way that some of our schools use those um, in a different way to adapt to the way that younger learners um, approach the work. And just finally, I um, just want to repeat again about the setting homework. Um, all of this, everything that you've seen and all of the content can be set as, as home learning as well. Um, and what you're able to do is set that for any student you like and they won't see what year level they're working from. So if you've got a student in year six who's working at a three year, three or even year one level um, in English, you could set that work for them. They won't see the year level that they're working from um, and they won't see anyone else's work either. Um, so you can create whole groups if you like to set this work to. You can set it to your whole class or as I say, individuals. Um, and there's, you can set due dates for this. You can make this um, sequence so that they have to complete this work in a certain order or they can play it in any order. Um, and I think that really highlights what Education City is really powerful for is that it has all this content to hand. You can adapt it to any way you see fit, but it also provides you with that backup data um, with the automatic marking that says um, this is how they're using it and this is the scores they're acquiring. In terms of um, implementing this from um, our point of view, we actually work with all of our schools individually so uh, to provide an implementation plan. Um, so we take on the goals that you're trying to achieve by implementing something like this. Um, and we work with you through, throughout the year to make sure that you're reaching those goals. Um, and because we have the experience of working with thousands of schools, we not only um, host webinars throughout the year um, with those schools that provide those ideas, but we can um, provide you with these ideas as well and point you in the right direction. So we provide training to all of our schools, not only at the beginning of the, of the year, which is obviously really important, but also we have touch points throughout the year to do other training for new starters um, or host Q, uh, Q and A sessions sometimes where the student, the teachers can drop in and ask us questions. Um, whenever you like. So what I would suggest is if you're interested in maybe um, taking a trial, if you have any more uh, questions that you have, do get in touch. I'm just putting the email address up here and the phone number. Um, also, if you want to drop me a message on here or ask any questions, please feel free to do so. Um, and I'll get in touch with you direct, directly. Um, but there is the email address and the phone number if you have any more information we can certainly set up a trial for you um, and take you through a more a detailed um, run through of the program but i will stay um, for a moment for any questions but i really appreciate all of your time uh, i hope that was useful and um hope to talk to you soon